The following video clip is from TrainSignal's VMware vSphere training course, featuring nearly 18 hours of training from a certified VMware V expert. For ESX hosts with patches and service packs. All right, there's a few different ways to download the VMware vSphere client. The easiest way is to open up your web browser and to point it to an ESX host or the vCenter server. And from there, you can easily download the vSphere client. Now, one other option for obtaining the executable for the vSphere client is that you can get it off of the VMware vCenter installation media. That media could be a DVD or it could be an ISO file that you've downloaded from VMware. All right, so the executable for the vSphere client is actually called VMware VIClient.exe. That's what you're going to run to start the installation process. Now, the basic installation steps are real simple. There's not a lot of questions to answer. Of course, you'll specify your language and you'll accept the licensing agreement. You'll type in your name and your company. You'll choose whether or not you want to install the host update utility. And then finally, you'll select the path that you want the files to be installed at. I can tell you in my experience, I have just taken all the default options and I've never had any problems. You may not want to install the host update utility if you don't plan on using that client PC to update hosts. That might save you a little bit of disk space. And like I said, you can really take all the default installation options and you won't have any problems. So the first thing we need to do is to download that vSphere client. And we can do it, of course, from an ESX host or from the Virtual Center server through our web browser. So what I'm going to do is to open up my Internet Explorer. And up here in the address bar, I'm just going to type in the name of an ESX host. I'll say ESX3. This is one of our vSphere hosts. And here I get the standard security certificate error. I'm just going to say that I want to continue on to this website. And this brings me to my VMware ESX4 or vSphere web interface for this ESX host. And you can see here under getting started, the first option is to download the VMware vSphere client. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to click on this and then say that I want to run this 110 megabyte application. It'll take just a second to download this over my local LAN. Now we can say we want to go ahead and run the new application because we know where it came from and it'll extract the installation files. And at this point, I'll start going through the steps that I showed you back in the slides to install VMware's vSphere client. So the first thing we need to do is to choose our language. I'm just going to take the default here of English. And with that, the installation starts. You can see down here it's extracting the VMware vSphere client, MSI. And that brings up the installation wizard. I'll say next here. We'll need to accept the license agreement, and I'll say next. At this point, we'll type our username and our company. In this case, it's the Wired Brain Coffee Company. And I'll say Next. And this is really the main customization for the VMware vSphere client installation. And the option here is, do you want to install the VMware vSphere host update utility 4.0 or not? Now the default is to not install the host update utility. But if we look up here, we can see that the host update utility is what allows you to upgrade VMware ESX to ESX 4.0 and ESXi 3.5 to ESXi 4.0. It also allows you to patch and update ESXi hosts. So to me, this is going to be a very important utility that's going to allow us to upgrade our existing virtual infrastructure and also to patch ESXi hosts in the future. In that case, I'm going to check the checkbox here and we'll go ahead and install the vSphere host update utility 4.0. And then as far as where to install the vSphere client, I'll just take the default of C colon program files VMware slash infrastructure and say next. And then at this point we have a final confirmation screen where we check install to start the installation. It'll take just a second to install all the pieces of the VMware vSphere client. In that time I'm going to pause the video recording and I'll be right back. We're back and all the components of the VMware vSphere client have been installed. It only took about two minutes on the PC that I'm running this on. And at this point we can just say finish and our VMware vSphere client installation is completed. So let's see the results of this installation and let's see if it really worked. Let's test it out by connecting to an ESX host and to VMware vSphere. Now to run it, I'm going to go down here to the start menu, to all programs, down to VMware, 
And inside here, we see the new VMware vSphere client. We also see the VMware Host Update Utility 4.0. Both of these two highlighted items here were installed when we installed the VMware vSphere client 4.0. Now, if we minimize everything and look on our desktop, you can also see that a new desktop icon was installed for the VMware vSphere client. Now, I prefer to have my icon down on the quick launch bar so that I can see it no matter what window or application that I'm in. So what I'm going to do is right click on this and hold down and drag it down to the quick launch bar. I'll drop it here and I'll say move here. And now we have a new icon for the VMware vSphere client. So I'll click on that icon and this brings up the VMware vSphere client. Now this client, like I said, can connect to either an ESX host or to VMware Virtual Center where you can manage multiple hosts. And you can connect with either an IP address or a host name. So let's start off by connecting to an ESX host directly. In this box, I'll just type in ESX3, which is the host name, for one of our VMware vSphere servers. I'll type in the default username, which is root, and then I'll type in the password that I used when I installed ESX. And then I can click Login. And it comes up with this security warning. And I can tell you it's always going to come up with this warning unless you check this checkbox or you go through the process of installing your own certificate system. So I'm going to check the checkbox and then I'll say Ignore. You can see down here it says it's loading inventory, it's discovering plugins, then loading the main form. And there we go. The vSphere client connected successfully to ESX host number three. To get the more traditional looking view here, I'll click on the inventory. And there we go. We can see the type of server we have and we can manage our virtual machines. Okay, so we connected successfully to an ESX host directly. Let's close this out. And now let's reconnect using the vSphere client, but this time we'll connect to a vCenter server. So I'll just type in vCenter here, which is the host name of our vCenter server. And at this point, I'm still using the administrator credentials, which are the default admin credentials for the server. Now, one of the very cool options that I should mention here is this use Windows session credentials. You can see how I changed my username to the username that I'm logged on with on this computer. Now, later in the video, I'll tell you how to configure VMware vCenter to use Windows security groups for administration. And then once that's done, I should be able to log in with a domain username and password, and that's going to save me a lot of time because I don't have to log in every time to the vSphere client. I can just keep that checkbox right there checked and just log in with the username and password that I'm already logged into on this PC. But since that isn't configured yet, I'll uncheck this, and I'll again type in my credentials. Again, we get the security warning. I'll check the checkbox and say ignore. And typically, once you get loading inventory right there, you know that you're going to get a successful connection. All right, so we successfully connected to the vCenter server. We can see our data center and our ESX hosts that are being managed by this vCenter server. All right, and that brings us to the end of this video. In this video, we covered installing the VMware vSphere client. We started off by learning about the installation requirements where you learned that those requirements really aren't very stringent and that just about any PC today should be able to run the vSphere client. You found out that the vSphere client includes a number of things, such as Microsoft.NET and JSharp. It also includes the host update utility that you have to select whether or not you want to be installed when you install the vSphere client. And then finally, it includes the main vSphere client application. You saw how you could download the vSphere client both from an ESX host and from vCenter, and it's also available on the vCenter media. From there, we learned how to install the VMware vSphere client step by step. You saw we mostly took the default settings. There were only a few options, with the main customization being whether or not you want the host update utility to be installed. If you never plan on using it, I recommend not installing it. Once you run it, if you tell it to download all the patches, those patches are going to eat up a lot of disk space. So I would recommend saving that disk space and not installing it if you're not going to use it. Finally, we proved that the vSphere client worked by connecting to an ESX host and a vCenter server using the new vSphere client. You also saw the new integrated Windows authentication feature where you can use your pass-through credentials if you're logged in with a domain user account and the vCenter server is configured to allow your Windows username to log in and manage the virtual infrastructure. And with that, we've reached the end of this video covering installing the VMware vSphere client. Look out for my next video covering navigating VMware Virtual Center using the vSphere client.